So when I say Australia, what you think about is the kangaroos, huge spiders and crocodiles and all these venomous snakes and animals that you won't see anywhere else in the globe, right? So I'm here at the rescue park where you will find animals such as baby kangaroos and koalas and a bunch of little birdies as well. This is a chance for me to get up close and personal and bring you guys along so we can go ahead and enjoy Australia from a little rescue park. I am not gonna venture out in the wild, so I'm doing it as safe as I can because I don't wanna come close to a venomous snake or anything I do not like. I love Australia. I love the people in Australia, man. I don't like the wildlife. I don't like, I don't wanna sound, sound angry about it, but I am a little bit. Angry about the Australian wildlife? Yes, I am, because everything there can kill you. That's right. why. After an incredible journey in the land down under, my time here in Australia is coming to an end. I certainly could not do everything that I had planned because, let's be honest, time goes super fast here. In Australia, let's just say they are a day ahead. That's the best way to think of the time difference. So it makes things particularly difficult to keep in touch with family and friends back home. At the same time, it took me a while to get used to the time difference. I was jet lagged for a while and it took me a little bit to get actually used to the time difference here. The one advice I would give you to anybody watching this video who's seriously thinking about coming to Australia, do not underestimate the size of this country. Check out this map right here. Australia is just about as big as the United States. And one thing that I'm not gonna to try to answer, is Australia a country or is it a continent? Guys, you decide. My understanding is Australia is both a country and a continent. <laughs> I'm confused about that myself. And I've done some reading about this online, but I still would not be able to tell you with 100% certainty what it is really. Some people argue it is a country within a continent. Some people say, I don't know. But you guys let me know. Australians, let me know in the comments below. Is Australia both a country and a continent? If so, why? So anybody who's reading these comments, we can put this issue to rest. But I'm not going to try to get into this because so many people have questions about that. So that's one thing. A few points as I conclude my trip here in Australia. The no tipping culture has absolutely no impact on the customer service. Now, you go to France and you probably will disagree with me. It seems like French servers and people who work in retail stores in Paris in particular are not as friendly as those you would encounter in the United States because many times when people work on tips, they are much nicer. But it's very different here in Australia. I felt absolutely no difference between the customer service here in Australia and the customer service that I have experienced in the United States. So the argument about does tipping influence customer service, based on my journey here in Australia, I would say no, it does not. So that's one thing I would say. The other thing I will also say, and I think that a lot of people will agree with this, do not believe what you read on the internet. I have to be honest, guys. I was a little bit nervous coming here because I read so many things, so many people saying Australians have no filters, they will gladly use the N-word, they will speak this way or that way, and that was not my experience whatsoever. I had a great time here in Australia, and I cannot wait to return. And I like people who are blunt more than people who pretend to be fake nice. So here in Australia, I can say, people are very straight up, people are very honest, and they will tell you exactly how they feel. But I did not feel uncomfortable at all about me being black in this country. Now I know some of the people watching this video are probably uncomfortable with me bringing up race, because I've read some of the comments in regards to some of the content I have posted. Guys, I'm a black man. And many black people watch me 
and they want to know what they will be treated or what they will expect in a certain part of the world. If you are not a black person, it might, it might seem strange to you, but bear with me here. As we travel around the world, there are places where people with my complexion will legit be in trouble if they show up in a particular country, city, or neighborhood. So unfortunately, racism is something that we have to deal with. As a result, we have to report to each other and let each other know what the experience is like. And I'm happy to report to you guys, Australia is a great place. It was the same thing when I went to Iceland. Many people were curious about my experience in a predominantly white country. Were they racist? Were they this way? Were they that way? No. Australia, you have no worries. Racism exists everywhere. As discussed in my previous content, this is not something that you would particularly experience here. So if you're thinking about coming to Australia and you're worried about these kind of things, I will tell you right now, book your flight, get on that plane and come over here. Australia is an amazing country. So I'm glad I came over here and I cannot wait to come back. So now let's go ahead and start with the first part of this video, which is my visit to Koala Park which is actually a privately owned park here in Sydney. As opposed to a traditional zoo, you get to come to a park that's privately owned and that main mission is to rescue animals. What's best than that? You get to support the mission, save lives of some animals out there, and you get to see some of those iconic animals that Australia is known for. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a zoo closer to downtown, but why did I come over here? Because I was told here at Koala Park, you can come up close and personal with these lovely creatures so i'm gonna go ahead and check them out join me so here we are we got in we're gonna follow the sign to koalas and kangaroos so here they have specific times if you want to come in and actually pet the koalas i, I got some food that you know it's about three dollars uh, australian so a little bit less than two dollars american and you can use that to feed the kangaroos now Personally, I want to feed myself a kangaroo. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar, kangaroos are actually a pest here in Australia. They destroy crops and they are extremely fertile. So there's a tremendous amount of them. One thing is for sure, they don't run out of kangaroos in Australia, right? So look at this. I see this beautiful head here of a koala. Now, there are specific times where they do presentations. I'm not sure I will actually be here for it. So you have the specific time. It's about one o'clock now. So in about an hour, they will do the presentation. So right now it's empty. So I will have to wait in order to actually see those. I don't want to miss it because I came all the way here. So I don't want to miss it. That's one thing I really want to do. So on this end, wow, look at these big birds, guys. Wow. So this is the farmyard. One thing I was saying about the kangaroos is that you can actually consume them here and don't you feel bad because there's so many of them. So they eat them, you know, to kind of control the population as well because there's just too many, too many. You can't just let them run wild. So what we got here in this first station is the emu, check it out. The emu is the second largest living bird in the world. And despite the funny shape that they have, those legs will actually help them move and they travel great distances. All right? So that's emu right here, up close and personal. He's a little bit busy right now. He doesn't have too much time for me. <laughs> so guys, I'm facing a little baby kangaroo. Check it out. I almost feel bad eating these things now. Do you have enough now or you want more? 
All right. <laughs> so you get to see the feeding of the kangaroo. You don't bring your own food. They give it to you at the entrance. And you can basically feed, but he be eating a lot. You know, so at some point he just gets a little bit tired, but anybody can get up close and personal here with uh, the kangaroos. So as a side note, Australia Coat of Arms features two specific animals. Number one is the kangaroo and number two is the emu. Why did they choose those animals? It's because these animals are not physically able to go backwards. So the message here is that Australia only has one way and that is forward. They're not going backwards. And right here we have the silky chicken. Guys, I've never seen a silky chicken before. Check this out. So the reason they are called silky chicken is because of the extra, extra plumage that they have right there. All right. The point of origin is supposed to be China, but they're not really sure exactly. So that's how they are. You know, the plumage looks like Latin or silk. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've never seen this kind of chicken before. Very interesting animals here in Australia. So guys, I exited the little baby kangaroo place over there. And I'm here with the ships and the goats. And apparently they're very friendly, but I'm not gonna risk it too much. So here they are. Hello, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> I don't know why this thing scared me. I'm not sure why. We're here. I'm gonna give him some of the food here as well. All right. Hey, hey, man, you grabbed my whole thing. <laughs> Wow, this guy. Look at you, huh? You see what happens when you're greedy? Look at your face now, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Tore up my whole bag. Man. Gotta keep a little bit of food for someone else. So, so it was all over the place. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, no. <laughs> he just took the whole thing. <laughs> and he's not even sharing. Look at that guy. Man, he's like, I don't care. I'll take everything. Oh, oh, he just, oh my God, the bag. That's right. He took my whole bag. Man. No more, no more food for me. And I thought the other one was wild. This guy, he's just like, forget you. I'm going to take the whole thing. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, boy. And guys, as I continue to navigate this koala park, I come here with the wedge tail eagles all right so there's two of them in there by the name of andrew and sue all right so one of the reasons i chose to come here instead of going oh he was just opening his wings one of the reasons i chose to come here instead of going to the sydney zoo is because this is actually a rescue park so this eagle for example has a damaged wing it was picked up in south australia has a damaged wing along with his wife or sibling whatever is over there and these animals are actually rescued. So this eagle, for example, in the back there, he can't fly any longer. So they bring him here and with the care of the workers here, they are able to nurture and feed them and basically keep them alive. They would not survive in the wild. Imagine an eagle like that that can't fly no more. Their ability to get food is significantly reduced and they become an easier prey for their predators. So they come and rescue these animals around Australia and bring them over here. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to come here because many times you go to the zoo and you feel like, ah, you know, some people feel very strongly about, you know, just releasing these animals in the wild and things like that. But no, they're actually rescuing them, keeping them alive here and taking care of them. Something that many of these animals are no longer able to take care of on their own, all right? So you got some birds over here. I'm a little bit less excited about things that I've seen before or can see in other countries. But um, this is still a very beautiful and colorful bird, guys. Look at that. Wow. Really nice. So guys, right behind me are the koalas. So this is where they will be doing the presentation. And I'll show you some of this, all right? So koalas are spread throughout Australia. And these here are actually an endangered species. So you heard sometimes of these fires, even in California, that kill a lot of animals. And many times, you know, koalas 
I'm, I killed. So koalas are like little babies. I just heard one crying earlier. <laughs> They're defenseless. And just like hurt the tree and stuff, it leaves and sleep all day long. So I can't wait for the presentation to learn a little bit more and I'll show you some of that content as well. So you have about that one over there sleeping. That's what they do. After he's done eating, he just goes up there, hugs a tree branch and just sleeps. All right. So that's what he does. <laughs> you know, and it's like... Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping all day. So that's the enclosure. Right, right there, it's eating. So before the presentation, I was I had a chance to actually observe them a little bit here and they make me want to go to sleep. <laughs> They made me want to go see. So I'll be back in this area and uh, let's go see what's up there. As we're waiting for the presentation for the koalas, I'm in the section with the white cockatoos. So you got one right there, swerving and chilling, having a good time. And they have like that yellowish feather on top of the head. Oh, it's alright? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so always on top of on the head. On top of the head. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. You can use a stick. Okay. Stick That's better. Yeah. So yeah. Alright. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And this one, you can scratch him for 20 hours. <laughs> he doesn't get tired, right? <laughs> That's funny. Scratch, scratch. Hello. Can you repeat? Hello. Scratch, scratch. These birds, they love to be scratched. <laughs> he was actually speaking English earlier. He said scratch, scratch. And I'm trying to help him say it again, but he won't. You heard it guys? Hello! <laughs> These loving birds man. If you don't scratch them, they scratch themselves. And they follow you around and they say hello! Scratch scratch! <laughs> it's been quite fun here, I'm entertaining myself. Man, I could spend hours just playing with these little birds in here. Man, who knew I like birds so much? I started doing this with my finger and they actually will bite, you know. They're not playing around. They will bite you. So you see, he's out there scratching himself now. You have to be careful. Hello. All right. I think he's about done with me now. So guys, it was finally time for me to meet the koalas. But I must mention, if you come into Australia, in particularly Sydney, let me not speak for the whole country here. In Sydney, in particularly at Koala Park, if you wanted to come here to hug the koalas, they used to allow that before, they don't anymore. And the reason why is because they have done some studies and they've realized that just in the mere proximity of humans, koalas have the tendency to get very stressed out. And their stress level just gets higher and higher if you get closer and closer to them. So there's no hugging, there's nothing like that. You cannot use them as a photo ops. All you can do is get close to them and basically look at them and take your pictures from a distance, that's it. Koalas actually are anti-social animals, as cute as they look. <laughs> they don't like to be near humans. Really, who can blame them? <laughs> they accept about six people at a time and you cannot touch the koalas so you don't stress them out. So this is basically the enclosures, that's them right there. All right, so this is the closest I've ever gotten to a koala, that's pretty cool.
that's the second one here. So they keep about two females and one male. Uh -huh. All right. So that's that. Just walked out of the enclosure. I have to say that was really cool. Always hear about these animals, but I never gotten this close. I hope you've enjoyed the little view of these loving rescued animals here at the koala park in Sydney, Australia. Man, the koalas are lovely animals, the little birdies, the baby kangaroos. I did everything I could so I could show you some of these creatures that you don't normally see on, the, on my part of the world. Not in the US, certainly not in Africa. Let's continue this Aussie adventure. So for the second part of this video, I decided to take a walk downtown Sydney to give you guys an overview and a general idea of what Sydney looks like during the day when people are just working and getting off work and coming home. So I also went upstairs to the Sydney Tower to have an eagle view of what the city looks like and that's coming up later on in this video. But first let me say, just as a general comment in regards to filming content in first world countries, guys, it is tough. People in developed countries are in New York, they will say on that New York Minute. Here in Sydney, let me just say, they are on that Sydney Minute. People are in a hurry, people have somewhere to go, and people don't necessarily want to talk to a stranger walking around with a camera. I mean, let's face it, until I started doing YouTube, it was a pretty strange thing to see. Who are you walking around like this? <laughs> so it's odd. So you try to stop somebody and ask them questions and have them engage. Some people will actually engage with you, but the moment you mention filming, they're just like, why are you trying to film me? What are you going to do with this? Not everybody is comfortable talking to the cameras. There's a lot of feedback that I was trying to get directly from Aussies, which I used to say Aussies, but somebody corrected me on the comments and said, it's not Aussies, it's Aussies. Okay, so Aussies were not necessarily fond of the camera. They would talk to me, no issues off camera, but not necessarily on camera. So if you've been watching my content and you were expecting a little bit more engagement from the actual locals, it's very tough to do. So I tried, but it's not always easy. It requires a little bit more time in order for people to warm up with you, get comfortable and allow you to film them. So this is not something that I was able to do as much as I normally do. When I travel to you know continents like in Africa where people and for the most part have time and are very friendly and you know a couple of dollars and they would just open up a whole bag and talk to you about their whole lives all day long it's very different when you come to this country so for any content creator watching they probably know that you know places like the u.s most countries in europe australia is no exception it's very tough to get content over here but i did the best i could and i hope that you guys have enjoyed the content i was able to film here guys i'm here downtown sydney but the main road on Castle Reed, and right above me is the Sydney Tower. And this Sydney Tower is the tallest building here in Sydney, so I'm gonna get inside. Pretty impressive guys, I made it to the top of the tower. And this is the highest viewpoint here in Sydney. So take a look. This is the back of the iconic Sydney Opera, right there. I'm gonna be walking around trying to show you the different angles that you can see from here. Enjoy.
dollars Australian to get up here and it's one of those things you have to do when you're here. So we did it. Let's continue to explore. It's a beautiful city and the best part about this place is the safety aspect for sure. This is Sydney here on the regular day. You can see the vibe. Lots of people are just getting off work right now and you can definitely get the vibe of the city. People are going up and down. Everything goes pretty fast around here. But I have to say, if you are here on the romantic getaway, you will have a blast. There's a lot of beautiful things to see. A tremendous amount of nice venues for restaurants and stuff like that. Now for a solo traveler, I would not recommend Sydney. It's extremely expensive and you are a little bit limited as far as like where you can go because most people here hang out in groups. Okay, so let me just point that out. So when you go out at night, you will notice people come here, go out in clicks. So if you're alone, they're not the most social people. I'm not gonna say that they are not friendly. People definitely are friendly here. But they're not gonna go out of their way to be nice to you. I tried to pick one of the most crowded place in the middle of the day, so you can get the vibe. Are people here racist? I wouldn't say that. All the Australians I met were super friendly. Uh, it, there's a difference between the have and the have nots, mostly in the immigrant side. The locals are very well off and they live in very rich, nice places here downtown Sydney. This is not for the broke. And when it comes to black people, Africans in general, the immigrant groups, it depends on your social status. I met a nice gentleman, unfortunately, Jay Fox, shout out to you. I was not able to connect with him a second time. But what we often refer as racism is actually classism, right? Let me point that out. And it's not that you are black, it's that you are broke. And that determines basically your social circle. Because Jay Fox is very well off here. This is exclusive Maserati. Yeah. The only black man in Australia had Maserati. Own it. I own it. I own Maserati. The only black man. Maserati Lavante 2020. See? There's a car, bro. Don't get enough of my car now. It's my Maserati. Look at the Maserati. He has a lot of friends. And his social circle is great. On the other side, I went far away from here in the area that's supposed to be the most dangerous part of Sydney, Mount Druid. I took a car, went all the way over there. And I met these guys from South Sudan. And they're not doing very well financially. One of them told me he's waiting 10 years to get housing. I said, man, you don't think you can find a job in 10 years? You have to wait 10 years to get government housing. He said he has all the education and stuff, but unfortunately, he does not think that he can find a job. So he's staying at his mom's house. But they get government help and everything. So I said, okay. So his outlook in life here is pretty dim. He is uh, looking forward to going out. So this is a busy street here in Sydney, you can see. Give you a vibe of what's going on. So that gives you a pretty good idea. So depending on your social status, it would determine basically the way you are treated here and your circle of friends as well. So guys, right behind me is Angel Place. Angel Place is one of the most interesting alley here in Sydney. Tucked away between George and Pitt Street, you find these bird cages. The city has pushed the wild animals away and this is a reminder of what used to be here. Tremendous amount of birds that are getting pushed more and more and more. And you hear those bird sounds. It's actually being pushed here from 50 different species. You can hear it from the different speaker system that they have. That's what it is here. So it's an interesting and a little bit sad reminder of what this major cosmopolitan city have done to the wildlife, right? I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I thought it's very interesting. At first, when I came here, I thought they had actual birds. You know, because you can hear the sounds and everything, but actually you don't. 
have any birds in these cages. These are empty bird cages that you'll find here at Angel Place right here in downtown Sydney. One thing I did not expect is that much engagement on my videos here in Australia. I am thankful to you guys who have found this channel for the first time and those who've been watching me for a while, people have recently subscribed. Thank you so much for your support. It helps a lot, you know, to know that your work is appreciated. So I want to say thank you to you guys who have commented both on the good and on the bad end. I mean, the world, we need the plus and the minuses. So people who have been nice, Thank you so much people who felt the need to you know educate me on certain things that i was completely clueless about i'm not that sensitive guys thank you so much for your feedback it's truly truly appreciated australia has been an amazing time both on camera and off camera and i cannot wait to come back in this country i cannot wait this is very different than i anticipated i had way more fun here than i originally planned but it's a tough country for solo travelers. I feel like Australia, if you're coming here, it's best to do it with like either a bunch of friends or as a romantic getaway. But as a solo male traveler, it was a little bit tough at times. But nonetheless, I ate good here. I saw some beautiful sights. This is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And to anybody watching this, I strongly recommend you come in and check it out. So Australians who have subscribed to my channels, Welcome to Adventures. Thank you so much for your support. And I hope that you stick with me as I continue on this journey of learning more about other cultures. And before I forget, let me also say the best part of my trip here was being up close and personal with the koalas. <laughs> that was, you know, a place that is known for the most dangerous animals. I have to say, I really enjoyed looking at these damn koalas. That was really, really nice. They're as lazy as it gets. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed some of the content here in Sydney. I'm looking forward to my next destination. Kindly hit that subscribe button, like, and I will see you on the next video. I really had a place to call my own, so I travel and I roam till I find that. But I'm full of adventure, so I wander and I venture. And it's safe to say that really I don't mind that. I book a flight to try to figure where my mind's at. A spot where I don't spend no money, just some time at. I mix and mingle with the people till I learn a little. I brought some weed and baby, maybe we could burn a little. She said, You're funny. I said, No, I'm David, and I left. Sun shining, birds chirping, let me take a breath. I'm headed to the city where my chance to make it. Best. What people like to give a little, then you take the rest I'm hoping one day maybe I can find a place to rest I fell in love with life and wonder where it take me next I like the hustle and bustle, I fell in love with the fashion I feel the pulse of the city, is moving me like a passion and it's mine We could wait back all the situation, circumstances Still we don't mind steady going on I dance around the street lights Hey I know every street sign Hanging around the block Like if you are my friend then you are welcome anymore